Hello, welcome back. So today's uh, study is Hesit et al. It's of um, 2024 syllabus. It's a new study um, and very interesting one. I like it personally. So it's on monkey and its preferences when it comes to toys. So we will talk about Dr. Wallen. He is a, you know, professor at Emory University, and he has been dealing with animals, especially monkeys, uh, for over 50 years. He has been a researcher at York's National Primate Research Center. So what he was interested in is whether monkeys would show a preference for a sex stereotype toys if they had a choice. What the sex stereotype toys means is uh, like humans, we have made that Barbie is for females and a truck or, or, you know, dragons, for example, are, you know, toys for the men or the boy. So we have very stereotypical when it comes to toys. So he wanted to check whether, you know, monkeys had the same preference when it comes to toys. Um, so he... Uh, had a lab partner that joined him was Janice Hassett, and they both worked on this study. So let's move on. So male versus monkeys, as you can see in figure 1.10. So if you don't have a book, don't worry. I have mentioned all of the points uh, from the book in this uh, video for you to not open your books at all. So uh, here it says that the rhesus monkey it's a type of monkey that is generally more engaged in a rough and tumble play than female monkeys uh and just like human infants but they are asking do you think wild monkeys like these would behave any differently to monkeys raised in captivity so the monkeys that has it at all use were raised in captivity so we need to know the aims before we start um, so they want to test whether the preferences are due to biological factors or socialization was the reason behind their preferences. They also wanted to investigate whether male and female rhesus monkeys have similar toy preferences to human children, despite they have no experience socializing with human toys. Um, so these monkeys never had seen toys. So one of the biological factors and the reason why Dr. Wallen, Professor Wallen, was more inclined towards the, you know, the biological factor was due to this one condition called congenital adrenal hyperplasia, which was an inherited condition in which the fetus is exposed to high levels of prenatal androgens. So prenatal androgens are basically male sex hormones. So and there was two twin uh a two twin study that he read in which the twins basically one of the twins had high levels of prenatal androgens and the, both were girls and when they were born uh one of the one which had the androgen was very inclined towards you know the trucks and the cars and the other one who did not have these hormones high levels of hormones you uh, she played with the doll doll and even though parents uh, of the girls wanted both to play with the dolls, they tried to stop the girl from playing, the, from playing with the cars, but she did not. So it really shows that um, the hormones and the biological factor has a lot to do when it comes to the preferences of toys. So you need to know what play means. Play means you get pleasure uh, while doing that thing. Um, I mean, you play with dolls, you have this kind of, you know, you express yourself with it and you also gain pleasure. And they also say that uh, psychologists believe that uh, when you play, uh, the individuals are actually practicing the skills that they require for adulthood. For example, girls play with dolls because when they grow up, they will have to take care of their babies. And so they kind of do similar things and it really helps the adulthood. So we know that the chromosomes and everything that male and female have different chromosomes and it affects their level of sex hormones. And that is a reason the brains of the male and female are also different. And because their brain is different, their cognitive processes 
uh, are also different. And again, you see in a nursery, the boys and girls are seen playing with uh, the boys are playing seeing with the cars, and the girls are seen with playing playing with the dolls. So. But this does not mean that girls don't like playing with the cars. Uh, the research, in fact, has found that girls like playing, you know, with trucks more than boys play with dolls. It's not saying that boys like to play with dolls. They're saying that boys would rather play with, um, you know, trucks than they would play with the dolls. But girls can play with the trucks too. And this is what they're saying. So the nurture debate is that they said that children learn through, you know, their gender and their societal norms that, for example, in South Asian culture, there is more that girls should prefer, you know, uh, dolls and babies. It would help them when they grow up and they would not let them play outside or cricket or something like that. But boys are allowed um, and they would be not allowed to play with dolls. So this is how you create a stereotype within the toys uh, and their preferences. The nature says that it's their cognitive abilities that depends on their child's sex hormone levels. I would advise you to go and look for um, more about the congenital um, adrenal um, hyperplasia and know what uh, is the difference between that person who has this condition and a normal person. You'll understand why uh, the biological debate is more you know, preferred um, by the Dr. Uh, uh, Wallen. So let's move. So this was the previous research that was done on the monkeys. Uh, it was basically, um, it, you know, the founding, uh, the findings was the following that the monkeys, um, vervet monkeys, they preferred playing with the male stereotype toys more and the females um, did the same. So this was uh, the study you can read. You can read about it in more detail. You don't have to. So this was the research method. It was a field experiment. It had controlled observations. It had correlational study also by using behavioral checklist. And the research design was independent measures design. Okay, so independent variable was the sex of the monkey, whether it was male or female. And the dependent variable was whether they interacted more with uh, the plush toys or the wheel toys. You can pause the video, do all these questions. So the sample was first originally it was 183 uh, monkeys, but 53 were excluded because 39 uh, were too young. That was very hard to tell their sex. And 14, uh, they were previously in a prenatal hormone research, so they, they, they were not taken. So at the end, there were only 61 females and 21 males that included both. But at the very end, you know, the data that was included in the analysis was of these 34 monkeys in which there were 23 females and 11 males, and they interacted more than uh, on five occasions. So that's why their data was included. The ones who did not interact with uh, uh, toys for more than five occasions were not included. This is the whole procedure. If you want to read, uh, it's apart from the book. I pasted it right here in case you wanted to read. The summary of it is somehow here. So there were a total of seven trials, 25 minutes each. It was an outdoor enclosure, uh, each with a different pair of toys. Um, and before each observation, observers placed a pair of toys in, uh, for example, one wheeled and one plush toy uh, outside while monkeys waited inside. So it was also, uh, the toys were also placed apart, uh, you know, 10 meters. Um, just to ensure the monkeys didn't prefer a certain area to the enclosure. For example, if they kept one near the monkey and the other one a little bit far, uh, it's natural that they would, you know, pick up the first one. Uh, rather, they would go more further to get the other one. So the toys were in all say, uh, shapes, sizes, and colors. Uh, so there were six wheel choices, uh, for example, wagon truck and, uh, and the car, and seven plush choices, including Winnie the Pooh, uh, Rajini N, and Scooby Doo Doo. Um, so let's go down. I forgot to mention that this is the original picture of the monkey, just to have an idea. The car is in the hand of the monkey. It's probably, it's a male uh, monkey, but it was also, um, you know, ensured by uh, the people there that it was actually a male monkey in this picture. Um, so, and it was also ensured that this picture was original and was taken by Mr. Wallen. 
So data was collected through a video camera uh, and it was focused on each toy to record the interaction. There were two observers um, who had a behavior checklist as well. And it was so, you know, operationalized the behavior checklist that even if it was extended touch, then they had to mention whether it was a hand or a foot on the toy and if they sit it, uh, if they had set on it, whether it was on the toy or part of the toy. So much operationalized. Um, going forward, the results were um, quite exceptional. Most monkeys didn't interact with the toys at all. Um, so their data was excluded. Only very few interacted frequently and for long data of 17 monkeys who showed more, uh, who showed less than five behaviors were excluded, as I uh, mentioned earlier. So male monkeys, uh, they played with real toys, um, not shocking at all. Um, and they played it longer than female monkeys. So however, the standard deviation was high, meaning that some male played for longer than others. Female monkeys played with plush toys for a longer time than male monkeys. There wasn't a significant difference in time playing with real toys or plush toys. There, uh, so social rank, if you don't know what social rank means, um, I will tell you in the next slide. So um, a significant positive correlation between social rank, uh, meet Yanni, uh, the dominance of the monkey. So, and the frequency of interaction was found. High, higher ranking monkeys interacted more uh, with the toys. Female monkeys who preferred plush toys had a higher rank than those who had not preference, had no preference. Um, moving forward, so the results, um, you can read it, um, you know, the men, uh, sorry, the male monkeys, they preferred real toys um, and female, they showed no preference. Uh, yeah, they played the same amount of the time with the real toy or with the plush toy. There wasn't an insignificant you know, difference to mention that they had a preference. Uh, this is the, from the book. Pause it, read it, memorize it. Everything is important. Uh, so you can see this one uh, bar chart and the other one. It's this one is of uh, male monkeys. Uh, sorry, the monkeys, and this one is of humans. Uh, you can see how similar they are. So it really shows that the humans uh, and the monkeys they both kind of share the similar preferences when it comes to toys. That really helps the argument. Then the conclusion. Um, there were due to biological differences that m the male monkeys chose the toys that had, you know, that moves and the female monkeys uh, chose, you know, the, the splash toys because, you know, they could cuddle it, they could, you know, hug it or whatever. And the reasons are mentioned in this case study in more detail in the original, you know, study. You can read it. I will link it below. Um, so the second conclusion was that toy preferences did reflect behavioral and cognitive biases, which have been influenced by hormones. Again, biological difference, biological factor. So strength was, uh, they followed the ethical guideline. As I said, these monkeys were in the captivity. So they were uh, given the access to water. They were fed well. They had fruits and vegetables every day. Um, also, as I mentioned, that they used operationalized behavioral checklist. It, you know, increased their validity and reliability. If you don't know what the difference is between them, please go um, uh, into your books and read it because it's important. It can be a whole question of two to four marks. Um, so reliability, I can tell you what it means. It means if they tested these operationalized checklists again on these animals or in other animals, the results would be the same and by animals i meant the monkeys um so uh, the second is the different pairs of toys that were used in each trial trial had increased the validity as we can determine the males were drawn to wheel toys in general and not just a specific wheel toy uh, so they also use video cameras. It also increased the uh, validity of the data recorded because the monkeys were used to the cameras. If they had to, you know, research it would go inside, you know, the enclosure and recorded them, they might change their behavior. And 
the monkeys might show demand characteristics. So it was a plus point here. Then quantitative data was collected uh, on the toy uh, interaction duration allowed for the objective calculations of the average time the monkey spent with the toys. So this removes uh, room for subjective uh, int uh, interpretation. So weaknesses were that it was a standardized procedure and it was, um, but it was abandoned because uh, one of the monkey, uh, they tore a plush toy causing the trial to be stopped seven minutes early. So this reduces the reliability of test. Um, second, there was a chance of observer bias, uh, um, maybe um, because of, you know, how subjective it could be. Um, and the researchers who analyzed the tapes were familiar with the monkeys and their gender. So this could have led them to unintentionally code a behavior of the monkey differently to their actual behavior. Uh, number three was there could be a lack of adult male in a, males in the sample. Um, so it um, reduces generalizability. How could it be that males were less is because the high ranking male didn't interact with the toys at all. So the findings were not generalized to them. It was only generalized to the lower uh, ranking monkeys, um, non-adult male monkeys, yeah, they interacted more. So they didn't interact with the high ranking ones, so their data wasn't um, included and could not be generalized to them. So this does uh, reduce the generalizability of the test. Ecological validity is low because the sample considered monkeys in captivity. Uh, they might be more likely to show interest in new objects. As I said, they were never exposed to these toys. It could be the reason that they have never seen it. So they reacted differently. If they had uh, toys previously, they must, or they could have, you know, you know, interacted with the toys differently. So. It cannot be generalized to the wild monkeys. Um, validity is low. In each trial, a group of monkeys were sent out. So if one monkey occupied the wheel toy, another monkey waiting to play with the toy would go to the plush toy regardless of their personal preference. This is the one, uh, the rank, social rank one, which I was talking about. So read it out. It's totally easy. As I said, 61, 21 only. 11 a male participated and 23 female participated for more than five occasions. Um, moving, the nature versus nurture debate uh, obviously has to believe that it was due to nature that male monkeys preferred wheel toys over the plush toy, whereas females showed no preference at all. So finding supported the nature nurture debate um, uh, that the interactions were affected by social rank. The female monkey's social rank was positively correlated with the time spent interacting with uh, both toys. However, uh, female dominance is influenced by testosterone, which is a biological factor. Um, so application to everyday life is that when you go out choosing toys for your own children, you know which one to buy for which gender. You know, either if it's a girl, you buy her a doll. Um, it's for their own, you know, good. You can say that. So I hope you liked the video. Um, I hope it helped. If you want one in Urdu, I can make one in Urdu. Let me know in comments. And if you want more, you know, shorter version of it, I can make one too. Thank you.